Hey class, this is Professor Luke, and welcome to week four, Project Management. If we are watching this, then we've made it through the first half of the course. Three weeks down, three weeks to go. Um, hope the first three weeks were beneficial. Um, keep working in your groups on projects, as well as um, your individual assignments. So what are we going to talk about this week? We're going to talk about two very critical topics. The first is risk management, and the second is cost control. So Technically, the actual management of risk and the control of costs falls under the monitoring and control portion of the project lifecycle, which is the um, fo follows execution. And actually, execution and monitoring and control, truthfully, I mean, the real world kind of run in parallel. Uh, I know the life cycle shows them sequential, but they're pretty much running in parallel. However, even though that the actual risk and cost control functions are in the monitoring and control, um, the actual concept of cost and risk start from inception go all the way to the project closure. Um, obviously, you need to know what the risks are when you're planning the project, when you're, uh, you're developing the cost plan um, in the inception piece. So um, knowing what costs and risks are all about are critical to running any project or even being on a project team. Um, so what is a risk? A uh, risk is, and this is from your textbook, an uncertain event or condition that, if occurs, has positive or negative effect on one or more project objectives, such as scope, schedule, cost, or quality. So let's think, for example, here, just off the top of my head, um, a risk that I've dealt with recently with a client is, um, as you know, I work for a software company that also um, implements hardware products as well as or basic a platform for our software to run on and we've been working with a major company in the United States here and essentially what happened was internally on the client side they were never able to get their um, environment and hardware set up correctly and so it's the, the risk of them not staying on time basically was a huge risk to our schedule now, the impact, if we were with this client on some type of uh, timed project, or actually, basically our schedule was blown out of the water, to tell you the truth, because we'd have to keep bumping it back um, and adjusting all the dates, keep bumping it back, adjusting all the dates. Eventually, they got their act together, and we were able to complete. Um, it could have had a bigger effect than it did. The biggest part on this one, that project, was um, while they were uh, trying to get their act together, our internal people that were actually where the cost was were working on other projects, and this was just sitting on the side until they got the got things going on the client side. So that's just an example. So why do we manage risk? Well, I'm gonna simply say. Your project success depends on it. Your stakeholder satisfaction depends on it. What I mean by that, um, basically, if you don't anticipate risks and something happens and you're not able to mitigate it effectively, then you're uh, either going to go over budget, take longer than you need to, which is the next two, or um, the quality or the overall satisfaction is just going to fail or be negatively affected. So what we do is we um, do something called risk management. And the flowery definition is the art and science of identifying, analyzing, and responding to risk factors throughout the life of a project and in the best interest of its objectives. So simply what you're going to do is you're going to try to anticipate the risks, prevent them if possible, and if not, how do we mitigate them so they have the least effect on the overall project. So, just a little bit more of how we manage risks. Um, like I said, this, this happens in all stages. Um, I keep a risk log or risk register, as well as at, with each project there's a risk management plan that says, um, th if we identify a risk, does the change committee need to meet? Is this handled by just the project manager, etc.? So, you always want to plan for risks if possible. So. Um, for example, with that project, after we had the first delay, 
um, I kind of we planned for assigning other secondary projects to the staff that were waiting for the client. Um, thus, they weren't as time sensitive, so they could be done as as needed. But it, it basically uh, didn't create idle time um, and uh, additional costs on this project. Uh, then, when we identify the risk, we have to look at a couple things. How severe is it? So, say um, you're working in a manufacturing company and uh, there's a risk of a strike from the union. The severity of that and the impact. Severity would be pretty extensive and the impact would be you basically your timelines would be um, all all destroyed basically you would would have to stop production. However, a smaller risk, say for example, a snow day and you had to close a facility for a day. It is a risk and it is going to impact, but it obviously um, one snow day is going to obviously have less effect on the overall project than say a uh, union strike. So just give you some perspective there. And like I said, we try to prevent the risks, if possible, by planning for them and anticipating uh, what we could do to make them not happen. But then if they happen, or there are sometimes risks that come completely out of the blue, trust me, and you have to basically see how you can uh, address the risk and mitigate any uh, circumstances as soon as possible with the least impact. So here's just some examples that I thought of. Um, Financial risk, budget risk, is technical risk, commercial risk, execution risks, con contractual or legal risk. Also another one I just thought of is governmental risk or an external environmental risks. So here's an example. Um, I was running a project. Again, uh, we're a software company that uh, creates pl or has a third party create platforms that our software runs on. So what happened was I uh, ordered 125 units for this project uh, to order from our factory in Taipei and about when they were getting ready to ship I get an email from our contact with the third party manufacturer saying oh we printed the wrong information on these boxes uh, basically they're cable boxes um, with the wrong labeling on them so we'll need to redo the whole run and it'll take an additional two weeks um, so, boom, big risk. So the project that I was working on was actually not outward facing, it was an internal testing project. So I said, we'll take the boxes with the wrong printing on them, I'll acknowledge that they are what they are, even though the labels are different. So that was a way to, that was an unexpected risk, because there's no way to plan for them printing the wrong boxes, or the wrong labels on the boxes, and screen printing so you can't like rip them off. Um, but you're able to, uh, I said, okay, what's the impact? It's going to throw the project way off if I have to wait two weeks plus shipping for additional set of boxes. So I decided to go ahead and ship them. We'll get them on time. We'll be able to implement the testing project. However, we'll just have to um, basically make record that they're labeled incorrectly. So good example. Okay. So we basically can accept a risk, we can minimize the risk, which we've talked about, um, share the risk among other parties, transfer the risk. We can, um, we'll talk about in a second about contingency reserves. Um, we can also mentor and cross train. So there's cross training, for example, would be uh, one risk is you have one uh, DBA that can work on this type of project. So you can either cross train somebody else at the you know, either a lesser level or have them mentor someone else that could step in if necessary. And then, of course, um, we control and document risk and through a process called change management, which we'll cover later in the course. So, again, this is just another way to view this, what we've already talked about. Um, basically, risk assessment and management is the process. Okay, now, since I've taken 10 minutes of your time, let's do cost control real quick. So do you remember, uh, well actually in every lecture I hope to mention, the triple constraint, scope, budget, and time. Remember it's a triangle and all three edges are pulling on each other. I would actually make this into a six-sided, I guess it would be a triangle, 
<laughs> whatever shape that would be, and add risk, quality, and stakeholder satisfaction. Um, basically, risks pull on all three scope, budget, and time. Quality is affected by all, affects all three of those, and stakeholder satisfaction again is affected by scope, budget, and time. So budget control or cost control is critical. Um, as a project manager, you get um, unhappy results and talk, talking to's if you uh, run over budget a lot. Um, for example, there's a project that I was on and the, the initial budget was created before I was on the team and they basically estimated the project way low as far as budget. So then uh, when I had to go, I had to go back for a budget review to our council that approves budgets and say, um, this is why we need more money. And it was not a fun experience. So uh, definitely you want to control budget, make sure in the initiation and planning phases that you identify a sufficient budget and then control the cost throughout. How do we do that? Um, three things. Cost management, basically ways to, um, we collect data and we analyze the data. Cost accounting control is basically a way to um, monetize and report that. And the cost estimation, we need to make sure that, like for example, since I work for a software company, our biggest expense is labor. And so for each new project, we have to, I get to go to the engineering managers and say, how many engineers will this take? How long? And then also build in a buffer of, you know, say an extra week or two. So what are the costs? Labor, of course, like I just said, is the largest, uh, especially here in the United States. I remind you some time to tell you about the difference between uh, countries as far as labor. But we'll get back to that at a different point. Uh, materials, obviously, if you're building a product. Um, also equipment and facilities. So say, for example, Attack companies are going to have all kinds of technical equipment, servers, networking racks, etc. Travel costs and subcontractors. Both are pretty self explanatory there. So, quickly, I want to cover there's different types of costs direct versus indirect. A direct cost is something um, like, for example, purchasing. Uh, purchasing equipment. Indirect cost is not directly related to the project, but it is. Um, experience basically experiences a through another source for example so if there's delays based on a subcontractor that would be an indirect cost reoccurring versus non-recurring that's self-explanatory fixed versus is variable fixed if you're going to buy a piece of land it's a one-time cost variable biggest one is labor um, you that's changing on a daily basis and normal versus ex expedited that's um, pretty clear but basically if you're doing it um, on a normal time schedule, your um, costs are one thing. However, if you have to uh, speed it up, um, that's going to be all kinds of overtime and additional cost. Or say you need equipment fast, then overnight shipping, especially from another country, is exorbitant. So I kind of, in my example, talked about this. But what are some problems with estimating low, low estimates, like I mentioned in that example? Unexpected te technical difficulties, um, lack of definition, uh, specification changes, which we'll cover more in the ch change management chapter, and then external factors. Um, that could be anything from the market changing to new governmental regulations, etc. And of course, um, this is just kind of through at the end here, uh, budget contingencies. Basically, your scope may change. However, if you're effectively managing your scope, once you talked about in scope management, then you're going to uh, have a change management process that should yield additional revenue to cover the change. Murphy's Law, if you don't know, is if something can go wrong, it could go or will go wrong. Um, also, uh, there's not enough parties were involved in the cost estimation, the right parties. And then there's like a kind of with number two Murphy's Law, normal conditions rarely ever exist. Okay, that's what I have for the week. Sorry it went a little long, but I um, thought it was all valuable information. Uh, reach me during office hours or email me or instant message me. Let's have a good week.